All right. Um, so welcome everyone to our webinar on working together, multiple partner creative space projects. My name is Alex Glass and I am the program and assistant executive director at Artsfield Ontario. We are very pleased to have two guest presenters uh, with us today, Alexander Badzak, uh, who is the CEO of the Ottawa Art Gallery, and Tamka Vovan, who's the director of Saw Gallery and Club Saw. Um, next slide. So sorry, everyone. My cursor seems to have gone missing. Erin, could you advance the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, before we get started, we just need to review a few housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, you can hear us, but we can't hear you. Your microphones have been disabled for this webinar, but you can use your speakers or headphones to listen in. You can adjust the sound by clicking on the speaker icon at the top of the meeting as well. We will be offering closed captioning throughout the webinar today. The closed captioning will be happening at the bottom of the screen where participants can change the font type, size, and color. So right now, I'd just like to ask if a participant uh, on the webinar currently you, uh, can respond using the chat box uh, to confirm if the closed captioning is working. Great. Thanks, Brendan. Um, so a couple more things. Oh. Kristen and Shiva, thank you, and Sam, thank you so much. Uh, a couple more things. Uh, we will be recording this session, uh, so it will be emailed out to you and posted on our website uh, for viewing later on. Uh, we will also be emailing out a survey following the webinar. We ask that you complete this survey so we can continue to improve our learning series for creative spaces. Finally, we will have roughly 10 to 15 minutes at the end to answer questions. We ask that you use the chat box at the bottom right to type in your questions and we will get to as many as possible. Um, in case you have not heard of Artsville Ontario, uh, we are a nonprofit art service organization that provides programs and learning opportunities that help make Ontario's creative spaces more sustainable. One of our programs is the Learning Series, which is a series of webinars, workshops, and resources that support our core programs, which are Space Finder in Canada, the Creative Spaces Mentoring Network, and Asset Planner for the Arts. Many of the webinars we will be offering over the next year will focus on capital projects and accessibility in creative spaces. In this webinar, we are looking at the Ottawa Art Gallery and <laughs> Saw Gallery, as well as Club Saw, and their renovation projects uh, in Arts Court. It's a really uh, fascinating uh, uh, creative hub that has uh, really uh, been together for many years, and to see this redevelopment and rejuvenation of the space with these two projects, um, I think will provide our network with a lot of uh, fodder and food for thought around uh, multi-sector and multi-partner projects moving forward as we are seeing more and more uh, creative spaces and partnerships that are coming together under one roof. Um, so uh, we are very pleased to have both Alexandra and Tomka here today to present on, on their respective projects. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce our presenters today. Alexander Badzak is the Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Ottawa Art Gallery, where she led the charge on a major gallery expansion project in the downtown core. She's currently a member of the CAMDO, or CAMDO, uh, the Canadian Art Museum Directors Organization, and she sits as an advisory member of the Ottawa Arts Alliance and was one of 13 member arts and heritage steering committee uh, uh, well, uh, part of a 13-member Arts and Heritage Steering Committee charged with renewing the City of Ottawa's 2020 Cultural Plan. Alexandra is also an adjunct professor at the University of Ottawa and a member of the Board of Directors of the Downtown Rideau BIA. And Tamka Vovan, originally from Moncton. Tamka Vovan studied music at the University of Moncton and ethnomusicology at the University of Montreal. She's currently based in Ottawa, and she's the director of Gallery, Saw Gallery, where she first served as co-artistic director from 2002 to 2005. She's organized many exhibitions, including the experimental ethnographic film and video exhibition International Geographic at Saw, and Droit de Regard de Galerie Sans Nom, and co-founded the Electric Fields Electronic Music and Media Forum. She worked for many years as a programmer at the Festival International de Cinema, Francophone Acadie, and organized the On the Bend Gay and Lesbian Film Festival in Moncton. She currently serves as vice chair of the Association des Groupes en Visuel Francophone, or AGABF, AG, 
And uh, finally, to get us started, I would like to now thing, hand things over uh, to Alex uh, to take us through her presentation. So over to you, Alexandra. Great. So much. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for joining us and for being interested in this idea of stakeholder relations when it comes to these big uh, cultural hub projects. Uh, so I'm going to just start off very briefly to say that I uh, started at the Ottawa Art Gallery, or what I'll refer to as the OAG, about nine years ago, really with a mandate for expanding. And, you know, with a lot of patience and a lot of perseverance, uh, I think we moved one of the smallest uh, municipal art galleries. We were housed in, in Arts Court, uh, uh, in, a, in the former county courthouse that is Arts Court, moved from one of the smallest uh, galleries in Canada, really to a space that's been hailed as one of the most important cultural builds in a generation in Ottawa. Uh, and so, we're, you know, in our first year, so we're coming up on our one year anniversary at the end of April, uh, we're looking to surpass uh, 350,000 uh, visitors coming through our space. So we're feeling like, uh, you know, we've really been able to achieve uh, a great success. But how did we get here? So there was a lot of core um, consultative work, a lot of preparatory work that went into things. We, we did uh, do deep consultation with the community, first through a feasibility study. We, we kind of sort of let uh, the, the communities, various communities know that we were serious about the building project through uh, Partners in Art Gala, and then just really implicated ourselves and continue to implicate ourselves uh, within the city structure uh, so that we became an important uh, stakeholder to them and that they would in fact be a champion in leading the charge to our expansion. Just to give you a real sense of uh, the timeline on it, yeah, it took time. <laughs> we started in 2004 with, uh, with the feasibility study and of course didn't actually open until 2018. Uh, so a long, long time, um, you know, lots of hurdles and ups and downs uh, amongst that. But I think for those of you who are truly interested in some of the P3 aspects or the public-private partnership aspects uh, to the project, you'll note that that took about four years uh, in the making to really structure that and kick it off the ground uh, and then, of course, open. Uh, so uh, a very long, very intense time, and I, I will say that it got more intense uh, as we got closer to our opening, as one could uh, very well expect. So I'm going to give you a very brief understanding of the overall project. So this is a bird's eye view looking down onto the site itself. We're uh, mostly that big blue uh, section. Uh, we occupy kind of a, a, uh, a rectangular area. Uh, that links the old arts court building, so that big complicated structure on my left. Uh, and then we also have our private partners, as well as uh, another public partner, the university, on my on our right. Uh, and we were uh, we came back and and looked at the tri triangular plot of land that was, uh, you know, really one of the last spaces uh, in downtown Ottawa that could be built. And so we decided to build there. It was a very small urban site, uh, so uh, a complicated space to build. And of course, what you're seeing is just the, the, the bird's eye view, and it doesn't really indicate that we, we grew up quite a bit. So we go up uh, six floors. Uh, so not only are we, uh, did we grow five times uh, the size with the purpose-built uh, gallery, we do hook up to Arts Court on four different levels, essentially making it accessible. There's also a 130 uh, seat uh, black box theater for the University of Ottawa. And, and then of course our P3 or our partner, our private partners, which I'll, I'll get into a moment, uh, that uh, occupy the podium uh, corner aspect of this site. So why uh, P3? Well, essentially I'll have to begin by saying Ottawa is a really challenging town to fundraise in. Uh, we have, what, eight or nine uh, national uh, institutions, national galleries and museums. Uh, we have very few actual headquarters of corporations and a lot of other NGOs. So it's it's just a tough time, a uh, tough town to, to raise funds in. And we knew that going into, into this uh, overall expansion. 
And so we really needed to devise a way that we could have success with our own fundraising campaign, scale it so that we could achieve our goal, uh, and then looked really with the city to find some other creative solutions for uh, being able to grow uh, the space in, in size and scale that we needed it to. So that's really where the idea of a private uh, public partnership came about uh, as primarily a method to finance the cultural build. So the private partners essentially receive the air rights to develop uh, the site and then of course make a contribution to the shared services. And those services are things like the loading dock, uh, the parking, um, you know, some electrical and mechanical uh, are all part of that. Now, what I'll get into quite a bit as I go along is the importance that the private partners are in fact the right fit. Uh, and so for us, uh, that really meant that we were interested in uh, not necessarily a, um, uh, the idea of a residency, a student residency, because of course we're right across the street from the University of Ottawa. Uh, we weren't interested in non-office tower. We were very much interested in the idea of of live workspace, so this idea of a hotel, a condo, uh, and then of course uh, uh, the public partners. Uh, and here's just uh, some of the exemplar images and some of the actual images uh, of us all coming together as both an art gallery, uh, a hotel, and a condo. I will say that we were the first uh, P3 visual arts project uh, that included a hotel and condo in, in Canada for sure, and we think North America. So some, some cool firsts there for us. Just going into the structure a little bit, we were very, uh, uh, you know, uh, we had the benefit, I will say, of having the city really leading this project. The city, in fact, owns uh, the building, uh, which means that from an operational perspective, they do cover the costs of uh, heating and cooling and maintenance and security, uh, which is uh, great for us. And then, of course, we have an agreement with them to, to control and operate uh, the art gallery. But when it came to the actual project, as you can see, it was quite complicated in terms of the amount of stakeholders involved. So not only did you have the private partners that came in as a consortium, and I'll get into this a little bit uh, further uh, along, the consortium included the general contractor, uh, the condo developer, and the hotel. But of course, it included the Ottawa Art Gallery, uh, the University of Ottawa, and all of the stakeholders in Arts Court. And just briefly, Arts Court is made up of about 25 arts organizations in a heritage building. So you can appreciate that it's, it's complicated. There's a lot of voices around the table, and there's the table, and there's the amount of people uh, that we're constantly meeting and having conversations about this. Um, so we did follow the City of Ottawa's procurement uh, policy. Um, so we became a voting member uh, when it came out uh, to the point where we were at the request for qualifications and the request for proposals from the private sector. I will get into one other aspect that's unique about this project and, and maybe not unique any longer, but certainly at the time it felt quite unique. This, uh, the OEG expansion and arts court redevelopment uh, was done under a design build concept. So what does that mean? It means that we were designing, <laughs> as it says, at the same time as we were building. Now, why that made sense uh, to begin with is because we there were so many stakeholders involved just in the Ottawa Art Gallery and, and Arts Court that we needed some time just to understand the size and scale and how we were all connecting together before we got into the contract uh, negotiations with the general contractor uh, and before you know the clock started ticking on, on the budget. So it was very important for us to sit down uh, with some, uh, some designers and really plot out um, our scale, uh, how each space, is, uh, each space was connected, and of course, most importantly, what that budget wanted to look like. Uh, so, of course, what it allowed for is that we had a fairly good idea of what the overall concept, conceptual or exemplar design of our, of our building project was. Quite early on, uh, we were able to go to City Council and get approval on that. 
uh, quite early on. So really lock it in uh, with our city masters and get that ball rolling before we had to go out uh, to tender. And we felt that that was uh, an important part. Uh, certainly, I still feel that that was an important part uh, to the timeline of this entire project. Uh, and what it also allowed us to do is take that exemplar design, which was at about what you'd consider the 50% uh, mark of, of complexity or of uh, um, architectural plans, and use that for our fundraising efforts. So again, we were able to kick into our fundraising efforts, certainly the soft or quiet phase of our fundraising efforts, before we even went out uh, to tender and, and nail down who it was that were going to come in from the private sector and, and who came in as, uh, as uh, the general contractor. Now, it was built to us, this design build concept was built to us uh, as a place for creative solutions from, <laughs> from the general contractor. I will say that in the end, and I know I'm looking at Tamka right now, I think we both uh, agree that in reality, a contractor led building project is really motivated primarily by saving money. Uh, so I would caution people out there uh, to go in that direction for that reason. Uh, I think there are some great benefits of having an architectural led project as opposed to a contractor led building project. Uh, nonetheless, here we are. There's, uh, again, some of the stakeholders around uh, this, this complex project. So not only did we have the, the private partners involved, the university involved, we of course had the city, uh, the federal government, the province, and, and of course our, our arts, court, arts court stakeholders as well. And so keeping all of those stakeholders aligned, uh, singing from the same songbook, uh, as we went through all the various stages of this project was extremely important. And that meant that myself uh, and particularly my chair as well, were constantly touching base uh, with the various stakeholders uh, to ensure that we were all uh, moving in the same direction. Uh, while I'm, I'm on the role of, uh, or uh, you know, uh, following the discussions around uh, design build, I, I do feel like I need to bring up the topic of the role of advocate architects. Again, because we were in a con contractor-led project, we really did need uh, some significant advocate architects uh, to make sure to advocate uh, for our needs throughout the design process. So again, they started very early with us on the conceptual side of things, the functional design planning. Um, and then the city hired them really to ensure that the general contractor was complying to the exemplar design throughout all aspects of the building project. Uh, so we as major stakeholders and the advocate architects signed off on the 50%, the 75%, and then 95% of the construction drawings. And I think that kind of touch base, those markers uh, become very, very important. Uh, this is a, a photo. Uh, of our capital campaign launch that shows early on that we recognize the need to work well with our private partners and to frame them as part of a unique city building project with a shared vision that was part of the rejuvenation of the downtown core. Uh, so that's me uh, sitting in the corner over there with a microphone uh, and uh, Seated next to me uh, was a member of the Germain family, the, the hotel group that came forward as part of uh, the P3 project, uh, a representative of the condo development, uh, as well as the city infrastructure people and, and one of our city councils. So again, that is a, just a representative of the conversations that we continue to have uh, throughout the project. And we often gave a very public uh, platform to our various stakeholders so that again, we were all implicated in the growth uh, of not only the Ottawa Art Gallery, but in this really unique city building project. So as I mentioned, uh, we made that decision early on uh, in uh, what's called the RFQ or the request for qualification stage to restrict the use of uh, the tower portion of our project to a hotel and, and a residential aspect. Um, and then throughout, and, you know, after we voted on, on the, the winning bid, we were, as I mentioned, we worked very hard to establish positive relationships with the contractor 
uh, as well as most especially the hotel group. So the group Germain, they're out of uh, Montreal, a wonderful family company, and the condo developer, which was Dev McGill, um, from the moment that the contract was awarded. I will say from a brand perspective, the Germain Hotel and Art House condos were a great fit for the Ottawa Art Gallery. And we leveraged that part, the partnership opportunities uh, with as many opportunities as possible. So sponsorship was one aspect of it. The Germain Hotel uh, and uh, Dev McGill often came in and sponsored events for the OAG or exhibitions by uh, the Ottawa Art Gallery. Uh, we continued to leverage uh, those relationships uh, to this day. In fact, our upcoming art auction, you know, Germain Hotel has come in as a major sponsor to that. Uh, but it went both ways. We also gave free memberships uh, to um, uh, owners of the art house condos. Uh, and we have artwork embedded into the lobbies of the Germain Hotel and the art house uh, condo as well. Uh, I will, though, say that the contractor relationship, so that would be EDC as contractor, continue to be a challenge. And, and I think that that's uh, not unique uh, to any building project. But there we are continuing uh, to showcase that we're one big happy family as much as possible. This was uh, part of the groundbreaking uh, that we did for the big project. Um, so, Tam, uh, so uh, Alex, this is a moment where I'd like to shift to uh, a quick video uh, that represents a time lapse of our project. And I really want to show this just to indicate the complexity of the project that you, that I think you can really see through the time lapse. So again, it's not just the the box aspect that is the OAG or the little box, which is the University of Ottawa's theater department, um, but in fact, uh, there's a big hotel condo uh, portion as well. And we'll just see if we can get it running again. Uh, See if it, it'll go, and if not, there we go. I personally love time lapse uh, videos. I just think they're a lot of uh, fun, and uh, but it doesn't seem like we're going to get get it quite to the end. Oh, oh, and I lied. There we are. We're almost we're almost done. <laughs> So I guess we'll switch over and I will say, although the relationships again with the hotel uh, continue um, after the condo um, developer moved past the selling and marketing stage, our relationship with them kind of dried up uh, because uh, they no longer kind of needed us uh, to sell their property. And they really did see the art gallery as a major selling point uh, for uh, their for their marketing. Uh, we did get a campaign contribution from uh, the general contractor, uh, but again, uh, because uh, it was such a challenging uh, relationship, and, and I will say also because most of these companies reside in Quebec, and this is an Ontario build, uh, there was less at stake, I guess, from a, a community building aspect that would drive uh, more um, donations and, and uh, sponsorship from, from those various private groups. Uh, but nonetheless, if anybody's exploring a P3, I definitely uh, encourage the ongoing relationship building uh, with uh, the private partners. Uh, this is just a, an example, I guess, of, of where we're at now, the spaces that we created. Uh, the one uh, really tall space that you see, I think, is a great example of how we're linking into Arts Court. On the right hand side, that's actually the exterior wall of Arts Court. Uh, we feel like the P3 really worked for us. Uh, we've got future members with our, our condo dwellers next door. Uh, and then of course we have tourists uh, that stay in the hotel. So for us, that really does work. And in fact, because the hotel has a lot of small meeting spaces and we have a big um, uh, special event space, we really complement each other, even with bringing in conferences and and you know various uh, private functions. Uh, so we really do work quite uh, well together and continue to dialogue now that we're operational. Now that leads me uh, to our other stakeholders, and and I would say the most important stakeholders, which of course was Arts Court and our community uh, relationships. Interconnectivity was a real key organization, organizing principle for the OAG expansion and arts court redevelopment. 
Uh, and that came through uh, from a physical standpoint in the way that uh, the project, um, uh, the actual design of the project was done. But it also came through, I think, philosophically. Uh, the OEG uh, wanted to work closely with all of our stakeholders uh, in not just programming, but actually in the design of some of our spaces. Uh, and as a, an example of that, uh, we worked very closely with the Canadian Film Institute on our Alma Duncan Hall, uh, which is a space that is designed both as a, a cinema space, as you can see, but also uh, an exhibition space, an event space. Uh, and they were part in partnership with us as we were going through the design planning to ensure that we could meet their needs. So we can do uh, 65 mil, like various film formats as well as digital formats. Uh, that's us uh, shaking hands as we're signing an operational agreement. Uh, moving forward, so we're now with a home uh, for the Canadian Film Institute and the Animation Festival. And that's just one example, I think, of many uh, of the partnerships that we're seeing, the opportunities for partnerships now that we're all linked together physically. And so, Alex, uh, again, if we could switch uh, to the final video. Uh, I wanted to showcase this video. It was done during uh, our opening weekend. Uh, and really just to showcase that uh, the stakeholders that I mentioned, Arts Court and the private partners and the city and the federal government and the provincial government were really just, you know, a few of many more stakeholders uh, that we wanted to involve in our growth and in our success. And so a big part of our philosophy was working rhizomatically uh, with the community and ensuring that we were as uh, accessible uh, a gallery as possible. And that included being open nine to nine, seven days a week, free, full accessible, uh, with just a real commitment uh, to work to in reaching uh, with our community. So what does that mean? It's really this idea that we could um, provide space uh, for our partners, that we didn't have to originate all of our programming. In fact, that we could just hold space for our community. Uh, now, Alex, I, I think perhaps uh, we're not being able to uh, get that video, and if that's the case, uh, oh, oh, here we go. So I'm just going to uh, look. Unfortunately, I think we are having some tech glitches with it, Alexandra. So um, what we could do is share it as a resource after uh, the webinar. I am sorry about that. But it looks like uh, it's not quite loading in time for the live stream of it. No problem. Uh, so I guess really on that note is just to say again that uh, that stakeholder relationships, uh, just to sum up, uh, is a huge part uh, of my job, of the work of staff and board. Um, it's complicated, it's very complex, uh, but I think there are great rewards to it. And I think uh, our numbers of 350,000 certainly blew past any expectations that we had for visitorship. And I think it had a lot to do uh, with that sense of interconnectivity and bringing in as many stakeholders uh, and implicating them into the success of the project. So maybe on that note, I'll pass it on uh, to my buddy, <laughs> Tamka, and uh, let her take it from there. Thank you so much, Alexandra. Uh, that was great. And the video did slowly start to load. So <laughs> we will be able to share it uh, after the presentation. I'm just going to switch over now uh, to Tomka's presentation. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Alexandra, for your presentation, and Alex for uh, having me as part of this presentation. Um, I'm very happy that uh, you all uh, were able to join us today. And um, 
Yes, um, I'm very lucky to come after Alexandra because she gave a, a very <laughs> enlightening uh, presentation of the entire project. Um, so uh, all the, the important background information on how the Ottawa um, Art Gallery expansion uh, and Arts Court Redevelopment Project uh, came uh, to be in place. Um, so as uh, Alexandra said, uh, Saw Gallery's expansion project is part of uh, the city-led uh, OEG expansion and arts court redevelopment project, which was approved by uh, Ottawa City Council in 2011. Um, and uh, as Alexandra mentioned, uh, Saw is among uh, the few main resident organizations that will be uh, directly affected by the repurposing of the spaces within the arts court facility. So. Um, the main other uh, arts court groups uh, that are uh, presenting groups uh, that uh, uh, that are affected by this project are Saw Video and Art Engine, um, with other groups um, uh, being involved as well. But those are the two uh, other main um, arts court partners involved in the project. Um, with this project, Saw will expand significantly to uh, 15,000 square foot which includes our exterior um, uh, space, uh, the saw outdoor courtyard. And uh, so this, this represents a tripling of our uh, space. Um, and so a very important uh, project for saw. So a once in a lifetime uh, expansion uh, for us, um, the, the, the most important uh, uh, capital project to date in our organization's history uh, will uh, expand to two levels. Um, and the new saw will include expanded galleries, uh, which in fact uh, are uh, the legacy galleries that we received from the OEG. Uh, so they were vacated by the OEG. Uh, and a new international research and production space called the Nordic Lab, uh, and an expanded club saw multidisciplinary venue, and a courtyard completely renovated to accommodate festivals and screenings during the summer months. Um, importantly, SAW will also become fully accessible with uh, new ramps, widened entrances, and all gender washrooms. Um, and uh, so uh, just to give you a little bit of a, of a sense of where we are in our project, um, uh, SAW's renovation was scheduled uh, to take place over a full year originally, starting in July 2017 with the reopening of our space anticipated for July 2018. Uh, but due to various delays in the city's overall project, um, the city space built renovation of SAW's facilities is still ongoing. And so we have a revised completion date of, of the end of May, and our reopening is now slated for this upcoming July. Um, and uh, so although the city's covering most of the base build costs of the arts court redevelopment project, SAW has had to secure the funding required for the acquisition of specialized equipment and for some additional renovations. Uh, so um, so uh, located at Arts Court since 1989, Saw Gallery uh, now draws over 32,000 patrons a year and has become the best attended artist run center uh, in Canada. Uh, so, so this Long plan expansion project comes at a critical time for our center as most of our openings and many of our club side events are now attended at maximum capacity. Uh, so, uh, so yes, uh, I will uh, move now to, uh, to some images to give you a sense, a visual sense of uh, what, what, we, what we've been working on uh, with our project. Uh, so uh, yeah, so this, uh, I'll first show you a few renderings that we had made um, uh, in preparation of uh, the, the uh, construction phase. <laughs> and so um, I, uh, Saw Gallery has collaborated closely with the city of Ottawa, um, you know, leading up to the exemplar design phase that um, Alexandra mentioned uh, um, with uh, an architect who was part of the city project team who, uh, uh, who helped us um, come up uh, with a functional design concept, et cetera. Uh, but um, interior design considerations were not uh, included as part of the city's base, base build. So SAW decided to hire an interior design team for the conception of uh, its main public spaces. So uh, here the rendering uh, was made by uh, an interior design team uh, composed of Montreal-based architect Jean-Philippe Beauchamp and Gatineau-based designer Simon Guibard. 
Um, and uh, what's interesting about a collaboration with this team is that um, they uh, provided um, the interior design concepts for our spaces, uh, but uh, they also uh, have come up with a new logo for SA, which you see here, um, and also uh, are uh, responsible for um, all of our uh, visual graphic identity um, uh, for the new space. And so we really hope to integrate, you know, uh, the interior design concept and our visual uh, identity for the future space. So that was uh, an approach that we took uh, with, with that. Um, and so just to give you more of a sense of our project, uh, I'll go through a few uh, renderings here. And so uh, our project is composed of uh, the expansion of our uh, gallery spaces uh, or, or um, the occupation of new gallery spaces and uh, reno the renovation of these spaces and also a uh, complete renovation of our uh, past club saw space, uh, which is tripling in, in size. Um, and so here you see uh, sort of the front part of our, our venue, which has a wraparound bar. Uh, and uh, that's another perspective. Some of the details have changed since uh, the production of these renderings. Uh, but uh, here you see another uh, uh, view of our uh, the front space of our club saw venue. And here you see the space, the actual venue itself. Um, and uh, you see one of the features of the new club, which uh, are, is a pop-up gallery, I guess that's the way to describe it. So uh, ex um, uh, walls uh, that can open up uh, to create a temporary gallery space uh, uh, for either uh, saw exhibitions or um, renters who want to have an exhibition space, but um, but uh, uh, didn't have access uh, in the past to uh, an, ac an accessible or affordable space. So um, this was in direct, um, uh, direct uh, sort of a, uh, like a solution that we found um, in response to feedback from the community um, uh, citing the lack of accessible gallery spaces. Um, and uh, so this is a rendering of the uh, new uh, lobby for a saw. So now that we're um, on two levels, it was important for us to think of the connectivity between our club saw space, which is on the concourse level, and our new gallery spaces uh, that uh, require people to go up the stairs or take an elevator to go up uh, to access uh, our new uh, galleries. Um, so uh, here, so I'll give you, <laughs> Uh, a few shots of uh, our renovation project, just uh, so you can have a, a sense of uh, what we're doing right now. Uh, so, uh, so we're in the final stages <laughs> of our uh, project, and so here you see a view of our club saw stage uh, um, under renovation. And uh, here we, we were just turning around and looking at the back of our venue, which uh, uh, has a, a large uh, box that is our uh, new technical booth. Uh, and so technicians will uh, work from that booth. And uh, to the left, you see uh, elevated seating that we put in uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to increase the, the, the seating capacity of, of the club, which will have also uh, uh, movable uh, chairs uh, as part of the seating system. Um, so that's another view from the stage. And this is a view of uh, a new feature of the, the club, uh, integrated washrooms. So in addition to washrooms that will be available to club users that are outside of the club space uh, in the city's hallway, uh, we have integrated washrooms, which is great for events happening within the club so that people don't need to leave the venue to go to the washroom. And uh, these washrooms include an accessible uh, universal washroom that uh, uh, we decided to uh, to add uh, well. We decided to add a, a adult changing table to this uh, washroom in response to uh, recommendations uh, of the NAC. So we attended an NAC workshop on accessibility, and uh, one of the points uh, uh, put forward was the importance of uh, adult change tables for uh, patrons to be able to stay uh, for the entirety of the of an event, and so. Um, I'll talk more about uh, the different consultations we did <laughs> for our project uh, later on. 
Um, so here are uh, is a shot of uh, the deployable gallery walls being built. And uh, this uh, elevated seating. And uh, here uh, is a commissioned work. Um, it, it has changed a little bit by Joy uh, Arcand, uh, who is our first artist in residence for our Nordic Lab space, which is still under construction. <laughs> but uh, our initiatives for this space have started. And so uh, this artist, um, Joy, who's based in Ottawa, has uh, uh, designed a new commissioned uh, work for the club uh, consisting of a neon uh, installation that says, uh, uh, dance, dance, dance in Cree. And so uh, this was very important for us uh, to have a work that helps position uh, saw, you know, as um, a center that is uh, a, a collaborator of Indigenous uh, artists and, um, and Indigenous community here in Ottawa. And so we were very excited to have this opportunity to work with Joy um, uh, in planning our new space. Um, this is a shot of our uh, uh, lift uh, at the back of uh, the club saw stage. So for the first time, we have a backstage area. And uh, this lift uh, will allow us to host uh, uh, performers uh, who have limited uh, uh, mobility. So, um, so that's a new uh, feature of the new saw. That was very important for us to ensure the accessibility of our space for the public, but also for our artists and performers. Um, and so that shows that the excavation that happened in the courtyard. So a very interesting new um, feature of, of, of Club Saw is that the exterior courtyard, which is which leads to the club, uh, has been excavated down a few feet so that um, uh, what used to be an entrance into the basement of the of, uh, arts court, which was home to Saw, uh, so uh, the entrance is now on the same level as the courtyard level. Uh, so we'll have um, sliding doors, glass sliding doors leading from the courtyard to the club uh, so that people can come in and out during the summer of the, uh, uh, from the club to uh, the courtyard. Um, that's a shot of uh, <laughs> our courtyard renovation. This is a rendering of a possible uh, uh, of, um, our, our new saw sign <laughs> on the, the canopy here and um, possible marketing of banners. Uh, the new saw program. Um, here is next, this is a portico next to the courtyard, uh, which is adjacent to our new galleries. And so this portico was closed for many years. And uh, now with our project, it's being completely renovated. Uh, there's some uh, abatement happening uh, with the lead paint uh, being removed. And uh, now uh, it will be open. And here, this is, there's a shot of the portico being transformed into a terrace. Uh, we'll have glass guardrails um, you know, all around it. And so in the summer, um, people in our exhibitions will be able to come out uh, onto the portico and have a glass of wine, for example. Uh, so that will be very nice uh, in terms of uh, creating a nice social space <laughs> um, around our galleries. And so uh, this is uh, one of the, ga uh, the galleries, uh, the legacy galleries that we received from the Ottawa Art Gallery. And so uh, one of the first things we did was um, look into the possibility of, of um, demolishing the ceiling um, because we had to put in a new, a completely new lighting system um, uh, for the galleries. And so we, we we opened up the ceiling, uh, which um, exposed, you know, all the duct work and all that, but that's being cleaned up and we'll be painting uh, the ceiling uh, charcoal to minimize the appearance of all this work, uh, duct work and piping and all that. But um, uh, we, we also raised the, the, the height of the gallery walls, but we're leaving some of the, the, uh, the brick work uh, exposed to, to show the history of the building. Um, we're replacing uh, the floor uh, with um, with uh, wood flooring, uh, so white oak from the bottom of the Ottawa River, so uh, reclaimed uh, uh, wood flooring. And so I'll just go through quickly. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so yeah, so our main partner for the project was 
uh, the city of Ottawa. And uh, it's been a very interesting relationship. Um, uh, uh, certainly, um, you know, uh, we, with the city, we had a great advantage uh, of, of uh, having uh, uh, another entity leading, you know, the base bill renovation of our space and funding it as well. Um, uh, before the, the city's project was uh, even confirmed <laughs> in 2011, there had been uh, many consultations of arts court uh, uh, partners uh, in um, trying to identify, uh, you know, uh, requirements for a new arts court space. Um, the Auto Art Gallery had been talking for many years about relocating, and so uh, during all these years, there were many feasibility studies on the arts court side um, and consultations without necessarily any funding <laughs> confirmed, and so that was that was. Um, interesting to be involved in this planning with a lot of uncertainty about the feasibility of this uh, the project. But um, what it did help us do um, as a smaller scale organization with less uh, fun fundraising capabilities as uh, let's say the Art Gallery, um, we were able to um, uh, build an important reserve fund for a project. So uh, knowing that there, there was movement toward uh, a possible uh, redevelopment project, uh, but by the city, it, uh, we we slowly built up a, a reserve, um, an important reserve fund <laughs> for this project. And so those years of planning really helped in terms of um, being ready when the project actually got confirmed. And another thing I wanted to point out is that um, once the city confirmed funding for the base building uh, component of the project in 2011, we were asked to commit to the project, and so. For a small organization like SAW, it was a, a sort of a risk that we took um, because um, we had no our actual capital funding uh, confirmed at that point, and we also were realistic about our fundraising capabilities. And so uh, we had to sort of take the leap of faith and have a lot of confidence that the project would would work itself out. I mean, we we from the start identified uh, you know additional space as a, a, a a priority for us, and um, you know, uh, tripling our space was was something that was based on you know our our short term needs, but also our long term needs. But we didn't necessarily have um, the type of budget that would would allow for the tripling of our rent, for example. So there were a lot of things that we had to sort of set aside in terms of concerns, and just we had to jump into this project as we knew we would never have the same opportunity again to. To uh, engage in this an important uh, capital project like this one, um, and uh, another uh, fact, uh, another thing that I would point out uh, in terms of like uh, working with the city on on this capital project, it did add a lot of layers of coordination and communication, and so um, uh, you know a lot of uh, you know yeah a lot of layers of of, of, of um, administration and but uh, the advantages were were far outweighed the, <laughs> the disadvantages um, and uh, so we did get support from many separate departments of the city so uh, obviously the the department uh, you know uh, uh, overseeing uh, uh, infrastructure projects and so uh, I mean the project management was done by the city and that was a great Defended and the base building component was funded by the city. Um, uh, and also, we, we did uh, add the progress, uh, the, the project progress, we did receive special funding from the cultural funding department of the city uh, to, uh, uh, for, for example, uh, 20 some thousand per year to help with the operating stresses on our organization. So, that type of special funding went a long way for us in planning uh, our, our project. And um, the city also played a really interesting role, like funding a, a consultation and a research regarding governance models. So uh, this capital project was a, a, an important opportunity to um, for ArtsCart to review uh, the government governance of, of the space. So, um, so now we have a, a committee called the Hive, uh, made up of uh, the main uh, presenting partners of Arts Court. Um, 
and um, the city plays a role uh, as a facilitator of uh, this group. And so uh, the improved communication from, from working with the city uh, within this framework and, um, uh, and having the city uh, uh, present at all meetings, uh, not as a part of this decision making, but more as a facilitator has led to the city to um, the strengthening of the city's role as a partner and advocate. So, so this has been very interesting, and it's an improvement uh, that stemmed from uh, this project. Tomka, um, I'm so sorry. I think we we just have a few more minutes. Of course. Uh, so I'll just quickly uh, talk about. Uh, you know, also um, we used to have lease agreements with the city. Uh, now we have uh, new partnership agreements. Uh, as as a result of this uh, capital project. Um, so there, there have been uh, many advantages to working with the city. Um, and uh, I also wanted to talk about, you know, the other stakeholders of the project, the Ottawa Art Gallery, which is the first place of the project. The art, gal uh, the art gallery was very generous and, you know, uh, and notably Alexandra was very generous in sharing uh, her expertise and experience with the project. So offering uh, concrete advice on working with the city, uh, uh, challenges uh, and strategies in working with the city tech team, the contractor, for example, also funding strategies with um, cultural spaces um, at the federal level, uh, uh, something we didn't have a lot of experience with. And so a lot of tools and resources were shared by the uh, Art Gallery, which was incredible. It, it, it made a big impact on our project. Uh, and um, also just a sharing of information regarding the legacy spaces, you know, uh, technical advice, recommendations uh, with regards to equipment. So all the resources that the OEG invested in its own project did benefit us as well. And so we're very grateful for that. And um, uh, I also wanted to touch upon the advantages of working collectively within Arts Corps. And so as in partnership involving many groups, it isn't always possible to predict how some partners might react to challenges that arise. And so uh, there were challenges at some point that was uh, uh, the uh, value engineering uh, taking place. And so um, that was not necessarily a very easy exercise. Uh, but, um, but uh, you know, and some groups who work collaboratively on, say, a joint space might, you know, sometimes one group will feel they're contributing more to the project. So there are a lot of things that can happen, you know, during a big capital project because of the, the states <laughs> of a uh, project, but um, but the advantages are many too. Uh, we've shared resources. Our technical planning consultant, Tim Dalek from Montreal, has also done technical planning for uh, both uh, Savadio and Art Engine. And so he has an all encompassing understanding of the project as a whole. And so that has been very important there. And, um, and now we, we're in a different stage of the project than some other groups. And so now we're sharing some information. And, and so it's, it's been really great that way. And also the casual nature of, of, of the sharing of information, like us seeing someone uh, in the Jackson Cafe or in, um, in, uh, in the hallway, um, things can happen that are very important, but that are initiated in a casual way. And it's sometimes the best way <laughs> to initiate uh, important collaborations. And, um, and also the different arts court groups are uh, stakeholders first saw um, with respect in particular to the club saw space, for example, which is used by many of the groups in, uh, in the building. And so uh, they're part of the, our community stakeholders, uh, but our consultation of stakeholders um, you know, involve them, but also the different groups in the community beyond the, the formal collaborators of the project. So um, one thing that we would say that was really beneficial to our project was a consultation of many peers. So we really um, uh, decided to consult a lot of people. And um, sometimes you receive contradictory advice. But the more uh, people you consult, the more you can sort of uh, uh, focus on what your priorities are and identify, you know, your your objectives and and all that. And um, and uh, we we did learn that uh, the choice of consultants uh, is very important. It's the relevance of the consultants um, uh, with respect to your organization. Um, yes, uh, among people we consulted were 
Gallery to BW, for example, in Toronto, and Buddies and Bad Times as a, in Toronto as a model for the club, the new club saw. Um, we've had a lot of very concrete recommendations, including the importance of double glazed windows for a new club, which we brought back to the planning and 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 the city agreed to put in place uh, to contribute the double windows, for example. So that's really very um, concrete to more uh, philosophical things. So um, yeah, so we're looking forward to the future collaborations that the that this new uh, space that's designed for collaborations is is um, uh, stimulating and. Uh, so, uh, yes. <laughs> so, Tomka, I think um, we are at a point where we do need to move on to the question and answer period now. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I think that's a really great value for our, our network. Um, I just asked during the question and answer period if you, if you both could mute your microphone uh, to avoid feedback. Uh, perfect. Um, so then during, um, when, when I call on you to answer, I'll mute mine too. Um, all right. So everyone who's still on uh, the webinar with us, uh, if you do have any questions for Alexandra or Tomka, I encourage you to write them uh, in the chat box at this time. I have lots. Um, so I think while perhaps you are thinking on those, um, I will go ahead and, and ask a few myself. Um, uh, Tomka, kind of going off your presentation, um, you know, I, I heard you talk a little bit about uh, the arts core community and how uh, they are stakeholders in your project as well. Um, you are in the middle of a construction project right now, and having seen it just a few weeks ago myself. How are you maintaining relationships with all of your arts core, uh, fellow arts core tenants uh, during the construction? Well, I would say that uh, uh, everyone that the, the new government's model that was put in place, you know, with the collaboration of the city um, has really helped, uh, you know, uh, even in maintain and increase communications actually between the different stakeholders. So we meet regularly and uh, talk about different issues uh, related to our um, projects. So each organization um, under renovations um, is, um, is uh, sharing the information uh, and, and, um, and uh, with everyone. And, um, and uh, one other th thing that helps communications is the, the joint wayfinding project that we're working on right now. So the city has funded um, uh, the hiring of a Montreal-based uh, group uh, that is uh, coming up with a wayfinding for, for the new arts court. And so we've worked very closely together on on you know selecting you know a new logo for arts for it and um, and so uh, this project has uh, you know in spite of how busy we are with the construction and renovation uh, we've had uh, uh, we've sort of um, uh, sorry Tomka I think we've lost you I'm not sure if you meant to uh, be muted or not um, thanks to the Hello? Can you hear us now? Oh, hello. Oh, hello? Alex, uh, this is the other Alex, <laughs> Alexandra. Uh, can you hear us? Oh. All right, um, thank you so much for answering that one. Um, I do have another question for Alexandra. Um, I love this con Hello? Sorry, Arts Build, uh, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Hi, this is Aaron from Ontario. Uh, so, yes, we can hear you. Oh, I thought I heard Alex. I think she's gone. Okay, great. So, really quickly, I think I'll just wrap things up for us. 
Um, you all can hear me. I, I hear a little bit of feedback. Alexandra and Tamka, can you just please mute your microphones? Perfect. Thank you. So uh, I think this is all the time that we have for questions. Um, let's see. So um, I'm back. Oh, hi, <laughs> thank you. Hello. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, my connection uh, lost me there. Um, thank you for jumping in. Uh, yes, um, we are we are out of time for questions at this point. Um, thank you, uh, Daniel Sharp. I haven't forgotten about your question, but I will make sure Alex ba or Alexander Bradzak gets it, and we'll make sure that that is answered for you. Um, Planet, uh, a couple of tools uh, that we wanted uh, to let you all know about before we leave. Planet Build It, it's a free online guide to capital projects. We encourage you to check it out uh, if you haven't already. And Space Finder Across Canada is available to anybody uh, who is looking for space or um, looking uh, to, to list their space as a creative um, uh, rental program uh, and for artist searching as well. So uh, we encourage you to list on there. Um, the next webinar that we are offering uh, is on Tuesday, April the 23rd on safety, fire codes, and accessibility for creative spaces. That will be hosted by Thea Curdy, Vice President of Designable Environments. Uh, and our presenters are Martin Day, of, uh, who is the President of Safety Media uh, Incorporated, and Marnie Peters, uh, who is an accessibility specialist. Um, we encourage you again after the end of the survey to, or at the end of this webinar, to complete the survey. Um, and we recognize uh, the support of our funders from the Department of Canadian Heritage and Canada Council for the Arts. Thank you all for joining us. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, at our next webinar. And thank you to Alex uh, and, and Tamka for your presentations. Um, we appreciate uh, hearing your stories and your projects. Um, and we're honored to have you as part of our learning series. So thank you so much to you and to everyone for joining us and hope you have a great rest of your day.